hello you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Stitarguskash, Honey Stoker. A fortress with as many projects as it has problems. And that being said, we have far too many of both. Now the dwarves are busily working at the moment, still trying to get the bottom of our pit cleaned up. Remember, we are still intending to fill that thing with water. Then having a closer look here, you can see our new construction is just about done. It's a couple Z levels high, and it has a tunnel leading to it. That should be good, I think. We'll touch in on that again in a little bit. On a somewhat unrelated note, we have Athaka still up here in our windmill tower. And I gotta say, this is our biggest concern at the moment. Is certainly. Because, well, I would like to get back to work over in this area. I really would. Remember, it was our original intention to have our vampires living in these spacious towers over here at some point. But we can't safely work over here until we deal with that bronze colossus. It's just too damn risky. That being said, it does not look like it has any intention of coming out of there anytime soon. Oh, and on top of that fact, the thing is in our windmill tower, which means we could not possibly make windmills to power our magma pumps when those are all done. Ugh, what a pain, huh? Of course, the only thing I could think to do would be to get one of our dwarves to go out there and entice the big beastie into coming out. Not something I would love at all, of course. Because although we did have a migrant wave lately, which was fairly successful, our population is still pretty low. I don't know if that one migrant wave was the herald of a new age of migrant waves, but for a while we didn't get any of them. And to foolishly lose dwarves at this point would just be, well, foolish. But of course, just to let a bronze colossus roam around our territory is a bit foolish as well, I'd say. Yeah, you know what? I'm feeling pretty stupid. Let's try a little something. What do you say? Well, I suppose if that's something we're going to do, then we're going to need a particularly brave or dispensable dwarf. Well, how about this fella here? Etter Conadinal, a fish dissector and one of our newest migrants. Spry, wily, and we don't know him too well, so if we lose him, then eh, it's not going to be the biggest deal, right? I mean, we have to do something. We can't just let Athaka stay out there. Well, what do you say, Etter? Ready to give this a go? I think the important thing to remember here is that if this is successful, then you will be the hero of the fortress, right? Bear in mind, you could be a hero today, my friend. Or a, or a smear, perhaps. Just a, a smear out in the swamp. <laughs> be careful. Gonna take things a little slow here. Etier's coming around the side of the windmill tower and looks to have spotted Athaka. Gonna let him move in a little bit more. Well, he is incredibly brave. I'll give him that much. Oh, and did you see that? It looks like Athaka is headed towards Etter. All right, that being the case, I'm going to disband Etter's squad, and now I'm hoping he's going to run back to the fortress. And no, no, he's not. Oh, but he is turning around. Okay, that is good. All right, now I'm going to unpause the game. Yeah, Etter is running, and Athaka is keeping right up with the guy. Mm, not good. Don't go too close to it, dude. Okay, there we are, running like a coward. I mean, a hero. Fantastic, that's right, get back to the fortress, you idiot. I mean, hero. And Athaka is moving now. Okay, that got it riled up. Fantastic. All right, you big metallic bastard. Let's do this. All right, dwarves, you ready for this? Find your positions. This cannot go wrong, or else we're in serious trouble. Mighty Athaka is still working its way through the swamp, dragging its badly damaged body through the mud, knocking away trees and stumps, and has made its way to our entry hall, and is headed down towards the fortress. Ready yourselves, dwarves! The time is now! Alright, here it comes, heading down that narrow alley. Let's do it, dwarves! Now, pull the lever! Please work! Come on! Come on! Okay! <laughs> okay! Oh, it worked! Phenomenal! It looks like Honey Stoker now has a new pet. Athaka the Bronze Colossus is now a permanent fixture here in the fortress. Locked up here in a siltstone vault that is soon to be at the bottom of a lake. Love it. And now we can turn off the burrow and we can also get rid of this tunnel here that leads to that pen. That way we can once again resume going to the surface, get those windmills in place and continue work on the Tower of Memories. I love it. Fantastic work, dwarves. We've done it. The fortress is now ours again. Oh, and you know what? Where is that bastard? Ah, here he is. Back at work like a good vampire. Etter, you are in fact a hero. The hero of Stitarguskash. 
and although you're not the strongest or even the bravest dwarf, your courage today was unmatched, and as such, you shall receive a nickname. And that nickname shall be... Anvil. A nickname that matches the unwavering courage of your heart. Plus, the guy really likes anvils, so I figured it'd be a good fit. Oh, and you know what? While we're here, I think I'm gonna make you a smith as well. Seeing as how we don't really have any fish to dissect here. <laughs> oh, and would you have a look at that? Some new migrants have arrived. My god, that is just fantastic. Well, they can't get in at this very second just because we're still working on the main gate, but it looks like there are already three of them. Shouldn't take too long. We're right on it, and we also have to be sure that the well is good to go this time. We're not going to lose any of these ones. Not like last time. Oh, would you look at that? We are up to 130 dwarves. That was actually a fairly sizable migrant wave. Fantastic. That is so good. Just once again hoping we don't lose any of them. But I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Not worried at all, actually. And now that our well situation and our bronze colossus situation are taken care of, I do have one other very grave concern that I would like dealt with. For you see, it's now been a several seasons since the fallen pults were sent out. You may remember that we had sent them out to raid profane evil. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Alright, well I didn't see this before. Um, here one second. Profane evil is a very tiny goblin pit with about 10 goblins in it. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but we had sent the fallen pults here on kind of a covert mission, just to see what they could scrounge up. But they never returned, and now, if we have a look over here at this tab, it looks like we have a trio of prisoners here. Seral, Monam, and Ezum. Only three of the six original fallen pults. Unfortunately, I have a feeling that means something terrible happened to the others. Tasted included, the leader of the squad. Not too sure what to do about this. The Fallen Pults were a squad of six dwarves, all very well armored, but admittedly they didn't have the most skill, and so maybe that's why they got caught. Um, well this might sound stupid, but I suppose I'm just going along with the theme of this episode. Uh, but I don't want to send out the Boar Bloods. They're our only protection here and we might need them. And so I'm going to create a new squad, with standard gear, and we'll go ahead and call it the Helmed Autumns. Just a random name. And in this squad we're going to put Saxel Loloxus who is a competent tactician and will make a great leader. And you know what? I'm just gonna fill up the squad. Ten dwarves. None of them have any fighting skill. Also, it should be noted that all these dwarves here are new migrants, like brand spanking new, just from that last migrant wave there, and they are now all vampires as well, just so you know. Now, my plan is to take the Helmed Autumns, and I'm gonna send them somewhere not dangerous at all. Like, at all. Although that being said, I didn't think that Goblin Pit was very dangerous, and I'm thinking right here would be very good. There is actually a small lair that is directly next to Honeystoker. In fact, on the map here, it occupies the same exact tile. Now, the only reason we know about this place is because Moses discovered it during his adventuring days. There shouldn't be anything here whatsoever. Now, I want to send the Helmed Autumns here to see if I can increase their Ambusher skill, which is the skill that is used when they're sneaking around Goblin encampments and such. Our goal now is to rescue those three dwarves from profane evil, and that's something we'll have to do sneakily, I think. And really, other than this, I have no good idea of what we should do. And so, yeah, we're going to explore Tunnel Dusks using the Helmed Autumns, and the hope is that by sending these guys out to a safe little cave, we can really increase their skills. I don't know if that's gonna pan out, it probably won't, but again, I have no idea what the hell else we could even do. Just gonna have to keep an eye on their skills to see if any of them increase. Like, Saxel here currently doesn't have any ambusher skill whatsoever, it would seem. Just be careful, you brave Nazusheb. You never know what could happen out there. Oh, well, uh, that was incredibly quick, actually. Well, I suppose that's to be expected. It was right next door, after all. Well, let's check that mission report, huh? See if they found anything. Uh, nope, not a damn thing. Well, that works. Now let's have a look at Saxel's skills here. And, well, I don't see much of a change, if anything. There's certainly no increase to the ambusher skill. Damn. Alright, well I have a feeling that when we raid places, we have to choose places where the option is not to explore the site, but to raid it. I suppose that would make sense. But now I'm a little hesitant to raid any of the goblin sites. It still says there are only about 10 goblins here at Profane Evil. How the heck could we raid anything knowing that this amount of goblins could kill our dwarves? I don't know. Maybe we just got unlucky that time. Or maybe there's something about that place specifically that was a bit more dangerous than a typical goblin pit. 
Now, I'm looking at this place right here, the Goblin Hillux of Wave Razors, which was not long ago a Dwarven Hillux, and they only just took it over and there should be about 20 goblins there. Should be. Maybe we could raid this place? Ah, screw it. Saxel seems to have a good head on their shoulders. Let's give it a shot. We're going to raid Wave Razors. Stealthily, very, very stealthily, dwarves. Oh, and you know what? This might seem like a bit of a reach, but if we turn off all these options here, free captives, releasing other prisoners, that sort of stuff, um, maybe that will increase the chances that our dwarves can be safe? I'm essentially just having them go there to look around the place, I guess. I don't know, what do you think? We'll give it a try, just to start here. I'm hoping that because this place was just recently conquered, the goblins here won't be as well situated as the ones over in Profane Evil. But I guess we'll see, huh? Let's give it a try. We will raid Wave Razors, using once again the Helmed Autos. And here they go, turning right back around and heading out once more. Good luck, dwarves. We're counting on you. And we'll just keep it a moment here. Time tends to pass very quickly here in the fortress. Ah, and here we are. The Helmed Autumns have returned. Very good. Coming in from the north. Excellent. Let's take a look at their report. Ooh, that's not good. Alright, um, it looks like we, the dwarves were spotted. And going back up here. And it looks like the goblin Tunnel Static Dimples outmatched Saxel with a cunning plan. And the defending goblins had a strong positional advantage in Wave Razors. Damn. And scrolling down a bit here. It looks like there was some fighting. Quite a bit of fighting, actually. And unfortunately, we did lose a dwarf. Irvad Handle Channels. And one of our other dwarves, Arab, had their right foot ripped. Ugh, yeah, we didn't do too well at all. Well, checking out Saxel, our leader, once more. It does look like she now has some ambusher skill. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Oh, and on top of that, she now is a skilled tactician. Oh man, that is excellent. Very, very cool. Actually, I'll tell you what. I feel like we're kind of on a roll here. I'm going to stick a new dwarf into the Helmed Autumns. And boy, this sounds really crappy of me, but I'm just going to keep using the new dwarves from that last microwave. And just because. As I said, we really don't want to go losing any of our longtime dwarves. And I would like to keep heading out, too. This does seem to be working. Very exciting. <laughs> but has the Nazusheb of Honeystoker focus on the vile goblin pits nearby? They had best remember the ancient terrors that lurk beneath. For the spoils of war can only mean very little to a life snuffed out betwixt the gnashing jaws of a forgotten beast. The forgotten beast Ab Daklam Omosposnu has come, an enormous one-eyed crocodile. It has three long hanging tails and it has a bloated body. Its burnt umber scales are large and set far apart. Beware, it's deadly dust. Alrighty. Well, kind of stinks because we were just in the middle of a very important mission. But it looks like we have to deal with this real quick. A forgotten beast, a crocodile, no less. A very dangerous creature. And far more dangerous is its dust. A deadly dust that can carry with it a large number of maladies. Now, I'm not sure if any of those maladies can affect vampire dwarves, but I'm willing to bet they can. If nothing else, then I know the dust being forcefully sprayed out from the crocodile can damage dwarves by slamming them into walls and stuff. But of course, I guess a crocodile can do the same thing as well. Yeah, this isn't great. Well, having a look here, it appears the creature is in the first cavern layer, up to the north, and I'm having a bit of a look around here to see if it can reach our dwarves, and... Well, I'm willing to bet it can. I haven't made any mention of it, but we do have a ramp that leads down to the Quartzite Caverns, in this tunnel here which leads off to the north, where we're building a little bit of a bridge here, just to help ease access to these dwarves over here, who are working on a water channel. That will help us out in the future, it's kind of hard to explain. Although, that being said, there are dwarves here in the first cavern lair. And even if I tell them to go to the fortress at this point, it's going to take them quite some time, I think. The first cavern layer is a winding mess of trees and fungus and webs. And in fact, that's the reason we're building that bridge up there. I think it's going to take those dwarves so long to get back to that tunnel that leads down to the quartzite caverns that that beast could possibly intercept them. Well, you know, we still don't know for sure if this thing can reach the dwarves. Let's let it move in a little bit and see if it in fact can. Alright, we're following the crocodile, and it does seem to be moving 
Well, hmm, it looks like it might be stuck. Oh, thank goodness, okay. I don't think this creature can get to us. I'm really hoping anyways. Sometimes it'll try to jump around and stuff, and if it did try to jump down that cliff over there, then it could open up new areas and our dwarves could be in real trouble, but let's just hope it does not do that. I do not like how it's so active. Like we have Shedim down here, the flame blob that appeared quite a while ago, and this thing has not moved a single inch since we originally spotted it. This is a good forgotten beast. And keep it cool, blobby. Well anyways, I guess we're just gonna ignore this thing for now and get back to work. I really want to do some more raiding. And so, let's get right to it. We're going to raid Wave Razors once more. Using, of course, the Helmed Autumns. And I'll tell you what, I'm actually gonna allow them to do stuff this time. Or freeing captives and whatnot. I don't know, but... I mean, we were spotted last time. And so I don't think not doing this stuff is going to help us at all. So, yeah. Anywho. And here they go yet again. Those brave Helmed Autumns. I do realize that last time we lost a dwarf and one of the others was injured, but considering the fallen Pults never returned from that last pits, I think they did rather good. I'm just hoping we're at least that lucky again. And they're off. We'll just give them a moment. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, and here we are. Let's take a look at that report. All right, they slipped into Wave Razors undetected. They stole True Worked Fondled, which was a book that was in Wave Razors, and it says they also stole treasure and livestock. That is very exciting. Let's see what we got. A spoils report. Let's see some thread, a table, a dagger. A bunch of garbage, really, but we also did get two beak dogs. Ooh, that is amazing. And here they come from the south. Fantastic. Carrying all their looted treasure, i.e. garbage. <laughs> ah, and there's our beak dogs. Two of them. Ah, but they're both males. Darn. Well, it's still better than nothing. Two male beak dogs. Now, we typically associate beak dogs with the evil goblins, but these ones are loyal to us, which is just excellent. They should be at least on par with our war wild boars, which don't seem very effective in combat, by the way. That is exciting. You know what? I'm sending the dwarves out once more. We're just going to keep sending them out like that. And once more to wave razors with the helmed autumns. And I'll tell you what, maybe we won't steal other items. Again, I don't really want a bunch of garbage here in the fortress. We have way too much as it is. Mission is set, and the Helmed Autumns are on their way once more. Excellent. Yes, I'm actually very pleased with how well this is going so far. We got ourselves a couple beak dogs. Our warriors are getting more skilled at sneaking. Oh, it looks like the Helmed Autumns have returned. Fantastic. Let's look at that report. Alright, they snuck in undetected once more, searched the place, and found nothing at all. Well, that's a, kind of a shame, but... Well, if their skill increased still, then I guess that would be pretty good, right? Yeah, actually, I'm having a look at these guys' skills, and it says they are all competent ambushers now. Excellent. Well, I'll tell you what. Now that our warriors have some skill at ambushing, I think we should send them back to profane evil. I'm eager to get those fallen pults back. And I have to imagine they'll be successful, too. They weren't spotted either of those past two times that they went to wave razors. So, let's give it a shot, huh? And I noticed, too, that we can actually make a mission to rescue one of these dwarves, specifically. Like, we can choose to rescue Serol. So what, we have to rescue one at a time? Hmm, that kind of stinks. But if that's what we have to do, then that's what we have to do. Okay, our first mission is to rescue Serol High Canyon. And we're sending out the Helmed Autumns once more, of course. I guess it goes without saying at this point. Good luck, Nazusheb. I'm sure you'll be successful, but don't get cocky. The last thing we need at this point is more prisoners stuck at a goblin pit. And once again, we'll just give them a moment. Shouldn't take too long, I don't think. Although, it will take a little bit longer than that last one. Ah, it looks like they've returned. Phenomenal. Now let's have a look at that report. And what, that's the report? They didn't do anything. <laughs> what the hell is that? Okay. Well, I don't think that really counts as rescuing the guy, you idiots. What the hell are you doing? It's like they walked the perimeter of Sitargu's gosh, looking for the guy. <laughs> Guys, you're gonna have to try a little bit harder than that, I think. Alright, well, if that's not gonna work, then maybe we'll just send them here and just kinda raid it like normal, I guess? We'll see if that works. We'll raid Profane Evil, and we'll see what we can get, I guess. Let's do it. Alright, well, the Helmed Autumns are heading out once more, and I figured while they do, we can take a quick look around the fortress. Very, very quick. Alright, Athaka is still fairly comfortable in its new pen. Fantastic. 
The crocodile is still over on its ledge, nice and safe, even more fantastic. The magma pumps are still coming along, and it's taken us much, much longer than I thought they would. I think it was two episodes ago I was like, oh yeah, I could bang this out before the end of the episode, no problem. Well, that's certainly not the case. Yeah, it's taken a while, but that's okay, because we still have quite a ways to go with our windmills, and until that's done, we can't even use the pumps. Oh, these projects, I'll tell ya. Things are gonna take goddamn forever. Let's see, what else do we have going on? Well, you know, here's something. We haven't peeked in on the guy in quite some time, but here we see Beans, one of our tavern keepers. Now, remember a while back when he was so stressed out all the time? Well, he's not stressed out anymore. No, in fact, he's doing completely fine, which is great. I'm going to attribute it to the fact that he's no longer a smith. I don't think he was really cut out for the task. He's been a lot more relaxed since he became a tavern keep. And in fact, he's not stressed at all, which is just goddamn excellent. A true beautiful bastard. Oh, and here we go, the Helmed Autumns have returned. Mission report. Okay, they head over to Profane Evil. They are undetected. They stole some livestock, fantastic. But it says they were spotted by a goblin as they left Profane Evil. I'm not too sure what that means for us. Not much, hopefully. And you know, it doesn't say anything about rescuing any of those dwarves. What the hell? Oh, we have a spoils report here too. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ten more beak dogs. Well, that's amazing. All right, here come our dwarves, victorious from their raid. And here come the beak dogs behind them. Oh man, that really is something. Getting our own beak dogs is pretty cool as it is, but it also means we take them away from the goblins. So it's less for them to throw at us. I like that. All right, and since they're back, I guess we're gonna send them out once more. But I don't know how the hell we can rescue these dwarves here. That's fairly bothersome. Maybe we'll just have another stab at it. How about we go for Monom this time? Yeah, we'll do that. And in the meantime, we'll get back to the fortress here. Well, down here in the Quartzite Caverns, we have our little project. I'm not too sure what we're doing with this exactly, but I have carved out an enormous portion of the caverns. Just because. Gotta keep those miners busy, you know? And I really don't know what to do with this. Fill it with water? Magma, perhaps, in the future? I don't know. Just figured I'd show you. Anywho, well, the Autumns are back. Yeah, the mission report is just the same. It looks like they did a bit of a perimeter sweep around the fortress. I guess to see if they could spot them out in the woods somewhere? That's pretty stupid. Well, okay, I guess we're gonna give up trying to rescue the prisoners that way. And I'm gonna try sending them back to Profane Evil, just on a regular raid. Maybe if we keep doing this, they'll eventually rescue those dwarves? I don't know. We'll see what happens, I suppose. And as far as giving you guys updates every time I send a squad out like this, I'm thinking I might cut back on that a little bit and just keep raiding places in the background. Unless it's a particularly interesting place. I don't want it to get too repetitive, you know? Maybe we'll just go over the mission reports from now on. And in the meantime, I'll keep sending them out to Profane Evil or some other similar goblin pit. How's that sound? Although that being said, it looks like they just returned, so let's have a look. Mission report. They got in undetected and once again stole some livestock. Ten more beak dogs. Wow. Man, oh man, I guess I should really start doing something with these things, huh? It'd be a shame just to let them wander around the place. Well, how about this? Down in our mines, we have this muddy corner here that's all covered with moss and fungus. I think I'm going to have the dwarves construct an enclosure for the beak dogs. A nice sizable area with some plant life going on, reminiscent of the filthy goblin caverns, I would imagine. It should make them feel right at home. Also, I'm getting in place a couple of nest boxes as well. I thought that might be nice. That way we could even start hatching our own beak dogs. Man, oh man, we're going to be up to our beards and beak dogs before long. Not that I'm complaining or anything. Now then, we're going to let the Helmed Autumns get back to raiding. And in the meantime, we have some work to do. But unfortunately, it's nothing exciting. Just the magma pumps and the windmills, basically. Oh, uh -huh. well, here's something. This one caught me completely off guard. English Aslamol, a militia captain vampire, has created Identrifat, a iron helm. He claims it as a family heirloom. Yeah, I knew this guy was a smith and I was aware that he was making an artifact, but I didn't think he was an armorer. Well, hey, I'm not complaining about bonus artifact armor, certainly. Let's have a look. Its name translates to Paddle Blocked, and it is worth 60,000. Wow, that's not bad at all. This is a iron helm. All craft ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular lignite cabochons, studded with iron, and encrusted with bands of cave spider silk, cushion lignite cabochons, and briolette cut kunzites. This object menaces with spikes of tube agate and tetrahedrite. Very cool, a whole bunch of details on this thing, and yet it remains fairly simple. 
which is something I like. We'll have to find out something interesting to do with this. I would love to award the thing to Saxel, but the Helmed Autumns still have not been successful in their quest to rescue those dwarves, which is a bit disappointing. But still, it's a, it's a thought. We'll see what happens. The Helmed Autumns have returned once more, and this time we sent them to Doomed Marks, a small goblin settlement in the north. Alright, they went up, were undetected, and they stole some livestock. Fantastic, I have to assume it's going to be more beak dogs. Spoils report, and yes, yes it is. Ten more beak dogs. Oh my goodness, this is getting a bit crazy. Currently we have 42 beak dogs. <laughs> wow, that is something. And the majority of them are hanging out in our new underground pen, which is good to go. You can see we have five of them down here which have already claimed nest boxes, and those nest boxes are now filled with beak dog eggs. Yeah, wow. That is a lot of beak dogs. We still have yet to think of something cool to do with them though. Eh, it's all good. I'll continue letting them pile up for now. Now, I feel like I'm starting to get a little cocky with this sneaking around business. The Helmed Autumns seem to be doing a great job. I mean, you have to agree. Having a look at Saxel here, you can see she is now a Adept Ambusher, which is just fantastic. And the Ambusher skill of all the other Autumns is right in line with her. So we have a squad of Adept Ambushers on our hands. And I'm thinking we should get a little bit more risky. A little bit. Well, you know, I'm having a look at some of the more dangerous nearby goblin settlements. Like we have Standard Worlds, the former dwarf capital, which is just a stone's throw to the north. I don't think we want to go attacking that. There are about 3,000 goblins here. And then down here to the south, there's another dwarven fortress, overrun now with goblins, that has a population of about 750 of the green-skinned bastards. Yeah, I don't know about that. We got Darkmine over here with a population of 2,000. No thanks. Diamond Wraiths. Again, 2,000 goblins. Nope. But then we have this place over here. It's a goblin fortress, but its population is only about 40, which is basically nothing. Though there's a bit of a caveat here, because this pit is known as Whisker Demons, and in it lies the Larval Castle, which is the citadel that Gugo Uzburial lives in. Mm, but there are only 40 individuals here. It seems like it would be pretty easy to sneak into the place. I don't know, is that really stupid of me? That might be incredibly stupid of me. Oh right, that was the theme of the episode, right? <laughs> Let's take a stab at it. I think my overconfidence has the better of me. We will raid Whisker Demons, and I'm looking to free captives belonging to our civilization, release other prisoners as well, and take important treasures, because there is an artifact here, and I would dearly love to have it. Yeah, let's give this a try. I'm starting to feel a little hesitant, but we are now past the point of no return. Let's do this, Autumns. I'm sure you guys can handle it. Like, that was unbelievably stupid, right? Like, incredibly stupid, like... <laughs> Like, I totally regret doing that. You know, at first I wasn't very attached to these dwarves, but now I am. Oh boy, I got a bad feeling about this. I'm sure you guys will be fine though. Just be careful, you brave Nezusheb. I have faith in you. You can do it. Yeah, they're goners. Right? Like, <laughs> like they're not coming back. Oh, that was stupid. Just gonna wait a second here to see if... Alright, alright, uh, we have a report here. The Helmed Autumns have returned. Very, very good. Okay, they head up, get into the place undetected, and they stole Silver Dusts, the artifact that was there. That is amazing. Stolen by the dwarf vampire Id Washed Boots. <laughs> that is amazing. Here they come in from the north, successful from their raid. Man, oh man, good job, dwarves. I knew you could do it. Total faith, 100%. Not a single doubt. And now let's have a look at our new artifact. Onelozu, Silver Dusts, a copper crossbow, hmm, go figure, worth 12,000. <laughs> well, I like to think there's more value in this story. This is a copper crossbow, all craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular Galena cabochons, and also menaces with spikes of elk bird antler. Very cool, extremely simple, but we also have to remember that this thing was made in a time before time. Things weren't quite as civilized back then. Certainly not. I'll tell you that demon cannot be happy that we made away with this thing. <laughs> Gonna have to do something awesome with this. Put it on display, perhaps? Yeah, I think we'll have to. Well, you bearded bastards, on that note, I think we're gonna start wrapping things up. 
What an eventful episode, huh? Now, I would have much preferred if we went out and attacked the goblins for once. I'm pretty satisfied with our spoils. We now have an extremely healthy supply of beak dogs. Still trying to figure out something to do with these bastards, but I'm sure we'll come up with something very interesting. Beak dog leather coats, anyone? It's on the table. And of course, even more exciting, we now have a new squad of extremely sneaky dwarves, the Helm Dottoms, who performed very admirably in their quests. Good job, Saxel, and the rest of you as well. And we can't forget our crossbow, Onelazu, stolen from the capital of the Torment of Witches, right from underneath the stinking nose of Gugo Uzburial himself. Yeah, he's not happy about that, I'll guarantee it. Oh, and on top of that, something else very interesting in this episode, we now have ourselves a captured Bronze Colossus, which is actually probably the most exciting thing to happen in this episode, because now we can resume work on the surface. Very, very important. The fortress cannot be called completed until the Tower of Memories is completely done. Uh, the magma falls too, of course. Patience, dwarves, in time. But of course, none of these successes mean anything with our poor fallen pulse still captured at profane evil. I don't know what to do about this. I'd hate to just leave them here, but our options are dwindling. Well, hopefully we can think of something. And if we can't, then it might just be in our best interest to forget about them. Though our lives would be that much more dark knowing they're still out there. Damn shame. Hey, how's it going you bearded bastards? We're here at the end of the episode again and I would dearly love to show off some more fan artwork. And so here we go. Now the first piece I have for you today is entitled Athaka, done by Berentai. And would you have a look at this thing? It clearly depicts Athaka, the Bronze Colossus, crawling through the fortress grounds after being badly damaged by that goblin siege. Isn't that cool? I mean, I know it's a 3D render, but it almost looks like the thing is actually sculpted out of clay just sitting in front of me. It's crazy, I love it. Cooler still is the fact that Berentai took some liberties with Athaka's design, and you can see its face looks a lot more dwarven. I can really appreciate that. Fantastic thinking, my dude. Oh, and you know what? Even cooler still is that this picture looks almost exactly like one of my drawings, like the proportions and stuff. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. It really is interesting to see a different take on one of my drawings. A truly epic. Fantastic work, Berentai. And coming up next, we have another piece of fan artwork done by Shogo, entitled Dwarf Palm. <laughs> Would you look at that? We can see here Zafan returning from her first messenger trip to request workers from a nearby dwarven hillox, but she has instead brought with her some dead animals, which she is proudly showing off to Atir, <laughs> whose face I just adore. <laughs> right, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> yeah, what do you want from the... <laughs> I don't know, I just love it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love a piece that can make you laugh. Definitely. Fantastic work, Shogo. I love it so goddamn much. And that goes for you too, Baron Tai. Both of you did some fantastic work, and I really hope all you out there enjoyed seeing these two pieces of a divine artwork. On top of that, I really hope you enjoyed watching today's episode. On top of that, I certainly hope you'll be joining me next time here in Statargoosh, Honey Stoker. And until then, you bearded bastards.